Good evening, everyone. I'm Elham Shafai, director at IE Art Projects Online Art Foundation. I would like to take my chance to welcome all of you in memory of my feelings. Martina Benedicca's artist talk in connection to her current solo exhibition at IE Art Projects. Martina is a Romania-based Polish vocalist and visual artist working in several different media, including painting, photography, collage, installation, video, and sound art. Before I leave the floor to Martina, I would like to present a video of her solo exhibition at IE Art Project. Hi, Martina. Good to see you today. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Can you please introduce yourself? Um, hi, as mentioned, my name is Martina Benedica. I'm a Polish artist, um, a mostly painter. I studied at Gray School of Art in Scotland, UK. I am also a um, classical vocalist, a singer. And um, I try to combine sound and a visual art at the moment in my art. As you could see in the last um, presentation. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, can you please tell us about In Memory of My Feelings? Sure. I'll go through um, the exhibition as well as uh, my other projects. Um, using the presentation, so I'll just share the screen with you, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, that's, that's good. Please let me know if you can, yeah, can you see. Yeah, I can see, yes. So the show you just saw is based on um, my last art residency in Italy, in a region of Calabria, uh, which is south, um, a town Squilace, and it was in August 2021, so quite recently. Um, it was the first project uh, where I combined, um, where I combined sound and um, visual works. Um, I'll go through um, some images from the um, residency as well as the actual uh, space of the um, show. So you can see um, on the left side um, the space, it was my studio in Italy, in Sculace. It was a um, primary school. I had this big space, so it was perfect for uh, recording the sound. Uh, it had also piano. It was a um, classroom for uh, music classes, I, I guess. Um, so it was good for creating visual works as well as um, the sound. 
Uh, so I would practice there before recording too. On the right side, you can see the actual um, space I chose for the exhibition. It's part of the uh, Castello di Sculace, so um, uh, castle. Actually, the ruins of the castle, um, the castle was uh, built in um, 11th century and it, the ruins survived until uh, now. Uh, I chose two uh, rooms. You can see um, just a bit of them um, from the top as um, right side, you have um, the first room, second on the left side, you have, you have second room and you can see them here. Um, so the initial idea for the sound uh, was to hide speakers around the castle. So when people come, they can't really, you know, identify where the sound comes from. It wasn't possible because of the um, circumstances and time, the time was limited. Uh, so we decided to put a big speaker as a piece of art itself, you know, and the sound was coming from there. Um, even though um, you can see the space, so uh, there's no ceiling really, and the sound was um, quite okay there in the castle, you could hear it well. On the left side, uh, you can see the first room with the actual drawings that you could see in the um, video before in the presentation. Uh, here another two shots. Mm. Initially, um, well, I didn't plan to have um, a drawing, so I thought of painting as I'm a painter, but on the other hand, I wanted to push a limit and come back to drawing in a way. Um, the other challenge was um, the actual castle. So we, you um, couldn't put anything on the walls, you know. Uh, so I had to come up with the idea how to present the drawings. Um, the title is in memory of my feelings. So the drawings were um, created in response to the sound. Um, the sound um, was um, my vocals blended um, in the canon, which is very common in 11th century. Um, and the sound itself, the piece, uh, was created by Hildegard von Bingen, which was a German composer, uh, who was, sorry, German composer from uh, 11th century too. So around the time the castle was built. And the whole idea of residency was to combine uh, archaeology um, with the contemporary art practice. So I thought it's a good way to bring the memory uh, from the past um, so the castle can live again for um, some time. And you, you can see the actual works. They are quite abstract, although you have the motives, you have the figures. Um, but um, what I wanted to do, I wanted them to kind of float, you know, as it's memory. Um, I often work with memories and um, the idea of like how much we remember. So rather than making them figurative, I wanted to have um, just fragments of what I remembered from there. And some photos from um, preps just before the opening. You can see on the left um, little uh, stairs and where I was standing leading to the spaces. And for the end, a few photographs you also saw in the, um, in the show, current show. Uh, so I call them fragments again because that's the way I work with photography, but also because it was the idea behind the drawing. So I kind of followed, um, you know, the, the idea that um, you just remember a bit of, of something. So you can see a part of sculpture in the middle and you can see part of the um, church, a cathedral from Sculacha where I was also recording. And on the right side, you have the piano, very old piano, which was in the room, my, my uh, studio there in Italy. And the photos weren't shown there because, I just, as I mentioned, um, 
there was no time to even develop them. The residency was um, about 10 days, so, so it was quite um, rash to make for it. But it, it gave me a chance to develop the project and, and I'm working more with the photography now uh, with this project. Um, so this is all for now from this project. Um, I don't know if we should go with questions now about that one or go through the whole. Yeah, so thank you very much, Martina, about exp uh, explaining about the whole process for In Memory of My Feelings. So uh, I have uh, further questions for this uh, exhibition and this series of work. And then later on, maybe, you know, just we can go through um, your other projects, we will, uh, if it is okay to you. Okay, and then we'll come back to. Oh, okay. okay, so, so just uh, uh, in your statement, you mentioned uh, through this project you investigated the translation of archaeology and subjective experiences into general history. Can you explain uh, about that investigation? So how how that happened to you, or you know, just uh, just explain further. Mm -hmm. How I used archaeology in my uh, drawings? In my, uh, yeah, just uh, the whole thing, uh, you know, just uh, because you were uh, in that artist residency, and so just uh, by chance it was like, you know, just in 11th century um, palace or castle, you know, just somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just uh, um, how you could uh, find a connection uh, all together, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh, and okay. investigate that, you know, just. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the translation of archaeology somehow into your work. Mm -hmm. A very helpful were the, um, was the research and the trips we took because we had a chance to go to archaeological parks and uh, sites. Mm -hmm. uh, so through this and through um, a knowledge of other people who were on the spot there and also curators who, who helped uh, with the kind of, you know, uh, the history the, um, behind the, our residency and behind that place because some of them were from there. Uh, I kind of blended, I uh, combined what I heard, what I saw on the site, um, what I read because the museum um, was quite big and uh, full of information and um, sculpture. So um, that was for me kind of general, you know, um, history because you have the museum so you can actually see um, what, what is true there. Um, so after doing the research, um, I went on to um, books I found there also because we went to library, local library there, um, as well as in the school there were lots of books on, um, on sculpture on, or on art history. Um, so through that research, I managed to um, find connections with what I wanted to create with, with what was in my mind already. So I learned on the spot there mm. because uh, before we didn't know anything. It was kind of a, it, I, I decided to apply also because it was a challenge, you know, I've never done anything like this with archaeology. Uh, rather, you know, um, I, I was interested in all masters. That's how far I, I went before. So it was, was something new and, uh, and challenging for me. Yeah, but it was, uh, I believe the outcome was uh, incredible because, you know, just the way you, mm -hmm. you look at it and then you combine all of this and all this media mm -hmm. you use. So just uh, it's something, yeah, I can just say that was great. <laughs> So uh, I just want to um, ask you about how did you examine the idea of uh, archaeoacoustic? Maybe it's something uh, to, um, interest of uh, you know just um, uh, our audiences today. If you can explain about that, that would be mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Uh, yes, because I wanted to create something with the sound. I went into uh, this idea of uh, archaeoacoustics, and I first I had to you know understand how it works, what it is exactly. So I learned also a step by step what it is. Um, uh, basically, it helps um, um, discovering what was um, before and the on the uh, archaeological sites. Um, so uh, you have a you know special um, you have a job you have uh, someone actually who who deals with that who works on the sites and works with the sound and um, I imagine this as uh, um, you know developing and um, 
discovering uh, how the sound was mm -hmm. during those times, or where it came from, what sort of sound mm -hmm. there was. Uh, so with that uh, idea, I went um, into the castle and I recorded the sounds around, mm -hmm. you know, so that was uh, actually all the places I went to during my stay in, in Italy. Um, I would take a recorder and record the sounds. Um, I didn't use that in my final um, mm -hmm. exhibition because uh, there was no chance, you know, it was um, mm -hmm. in the open space where people could come and, and uh, see. So um, there was no time and, and um, space for adding extra sound where mm -hmm. you had already found uh, my voice I created. Um, so it's still work in progress with this. I have the recordings. Um, and even, you know, like uh, uh, trees, barks, th these sort of things. So the uh, nature that lives mm -hmm. there, this spot, this is um, how I understand also the, the idea of acoustics uh, on the archaeological site. Okay, but uh, can you please explain, because this is uh, maybe the audiences today here, maybe they don't know about um, uh, this this music we had already, you know, just we played that, uh, I believe that was like uh, contain your vocals also to that, right? So, uh, sorry, I couldn't see, I couldn't hear you, if you can repeat. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, just can you explain about the sound piece, like the piece you uh, with your vocal? So um, how how you manage that, or how you know just how it came to your mind, you know, just with a certain uh, you know just um, like music, and you can add your vocals to it, and then we could have or we could listen just now. Uh, that was your uh, your vocal containing your vocals, uh, I believe, right? So just yes. uh, yeah, how uh, how you could manage that, or how was the process of uh, of doing that? Mm -hmm. So uh, again, coming back to the research, mm -hmm. I was looking for a, a first. My idea was uh, it was my first sound project, so I thought, okay, I will create some sounds based mm -hmm. on the uh, sounds I found on the uh, spot uh, in in the castle. Uh, but that was. Uh, um, too big of a challenge for me, so I went. Uh, I went uh, back to the history, and I found this composer um, mentioned before, Hildegard von Bingen, um, a German composer, woman, which was very important to me because there were many women um, at that time um, who would compose and make music. Mm -hmm. So that was the first. Uh, the first thing I was. I was glad I found. A, um, composer and musician as well as piece I would like uh, to sing to prepare. Um, I chose that piece because it was in connection with what I saw, mm -hmm. um, how I felt there. Um, the piece is um, about, you know, um, a woman uh, beginning and existence. So the topics that interest me, but also um, the ones that work uh, with this kind of, in this kind of environment like the ruins of a castle, so something very old. Uh, so I felt um, this piece was kind of bringing um, something back. So, you know, kind of like resurrection sort of thing. Um, so I studied, definitely, I studied the um, lyrics. So what it actually says, um, mm -hmm. it was in Latin. Uh, and then I went to um, cathedral. I mentioned before, um, mm -hmm. so I could feel, you know, the kind of um, vibe that was that time because it was also um, old church with great acoustics. Uh, so I practiced and I recorded first just a fragment of the piece. Again, I was dealing with fragments, so I didn't want to, you know, uh, push the limits to go mm -hmm. with the very long piece. Uh, that wouldn't make sense really for me. So I just decided to have um, a fragment, which is important, uh, which makes connection, mm -hmm. uh, and then repeat it. So I would record myself. I, I believe I recorded over 100 times, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in the studio, in the uh, cathedral. Um, and what I would do, I would play mm -hmm. my voice, you know, already recorded, and then I would sing again. 
and then again again um i made um, i think i made over 20 um like i blended over 20 voices but i decided to stick to 12 because i liked it from this kind of musical perspective how it uh, how the sound uh, worked together so uh, that was the story <laughs> Yeah, very interesting though. But uh, I have a question. So just I'm curious um, uh, about, you know, just uh, because you had that uh, on-site uh, speakers, right, to, to play something. So just it was you could manage all of this uh, sound uh, combination uh, uh, with the music during your stay at the residency or it was something, you know, just you, you, you manage after uh, the residency, you combine it later mm -hmm. on. No, no, I managed during the residency because oh. that was the main piece yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to show. Yeah. So um, it was a bit of a struggle, especially with the speakers, because, you know, mm. the idea was different. And then I had to yeah, change yeah, yeah. it in the end, the same day almost. Um, but I managed to record everything and I gave the ready piece as I wanted it to be. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so <laughs> now the idea is just how to develop because I can develop the visuals um, of this project, but I would mm -hmm. like to also develop uh, the sound. So I'm looking for different composers, maybe this time my own sound mm -hmm. um, and kind of ref reflect on what I what I've already done. To combine. Yeah, I'm looking forward to 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 listen to it, to whatever you <laughs> you are planning to do. So I'm sure it would be very interesting. So uh, just uh, in uh, you mentioned in memory of me uh, of my feelings is the first part of sound art projects during your stay at in ruins art residency in Italy, right? So um, I just want to ask you to share your experience with the art uh, residency. So just have you ever had any other experiences in during the art residency, or how you can you know you just, you think. Uh, it can be helpful for artists because we have uh, a lot of young artists here today with us. So they may never have uh, experience with artist residency. So just, I want you to explain a little bit more about your experience with them. Uh, I will go through other residencies uh, with my presentation okay. uh, later. Okay. Um, but uh, what I can say about this one, um, definitely recommend, especially when it's a challenge, um it's uh, you know it's um even for a short time because it was as i mentioned over almost two weeks so if you were a beginner you might not want to go for like six months you know because you don't know like how it's gonna work how you're gonna feel um so it's great if you start to go with a shorter residency um if you really want to go well in the beginning maybe i start with a few years back when i had this idea, okay, everyone is going, you know, for these, applying for these residencies, so maybe I'll try. I applied and um, it was very hard to get in, especially, you know, the nice places like um, sunny places, let's say, so Italy, Portugal, uh, um, also um, interesting from, you know, artistic point of view uh, for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. so, um, I was interested at the time and, uh, and art history more so and sculpture so that was the, the idea um, and then um, I just um, I just uh, I thought okay I'm a painter so let's look for a painting residency to start mm -hmm. um, I started with a painting residency in Romania I will mention this uh, later mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was a month residency month long mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, you would work in a studio, like uh, with others, because it was part of um, Arts Academy here in mm -hmm. Romania. Mm -hmm. So I would work in a studio, and uh, artist talk would be also included, and as well as exhibition. So I think it's a great uh, way to um, to also promote your work outside, to speak mm -hmm. to other um, students, other artists, because you meet also other artists, not just uh, people your age. Um, totally different environment, also language, uh, culture. So uh, you might be uh, also careful because your art might change, you know, <laughs> the way you look at stuff, the way you think might change. Uh, so definitely recommend um, 
I had this idea to have one residency per, per year. Let's see if that works. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully that also, works. <laughs> also, I've done um, one virtual residency uh, mm -hmm. with Spain, mm -hmm. close to Barcelona. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting project because um, again, you apply and, and you whether you are chosen, uh, you can be chosen there. Um, and um, again, in group of other artists. So you have artist talks, you have everyday meetings, mm -hmm. um, you show your work. Um, all, you have to also remember that it's not always about making, you know, outcome. You have mm -hmm. the project done, unless you really want, like, you mm -hmm. know what you're going to do and you want to accomplish mm -hmm. it. But I realize it's also about the process rather than the outcome. So exactly. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lovely experience and definitely yeah. recommend. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, I, I already mentioned that to you. I want you to talk uh, a bit more about this uh, residency or your uh, experience with that because um, it is very interesting experiences for whoever they mm -hmm. haven't done this. So just, I really strongly recommend that because as you mentioned, it's, uh, it's not just about you know, outcome, it's the process, it's the connections, it's the relations. And all of this work together to to make you a different person somehow. So just after yeah. resident each residency, yes. you know, just you feel something different. You feel something happen, but you don't know what that is. But and then when you start working again, then you will you will feel mm -hmm. the the effect, and yes. uh, that is very interesting. And as you mentioned, the um, relationships with people you meet lots of new people and also curators with, yes. who can help you. You know, it's a it's a great way of of um, uh, meeting um, fellow artists and, and just learning about art you know, all over the world, not just yeah. in, uh, in your city or country. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> but nowadays, uh, is everything is uh, virtual. It's, uh, you know, just uh, not everywhere, but, you know, just uh, so many countries, you know, they still, you know, just uh, do things uh, online or they still have a lot of restrictions on all of this. So just uh, you know, I, I organized myself a few uh, of um, mm -hmm. virtual residencies and just they were amazing. So, yeah, just uh, and you also mentioned about your experience in that uh, virtual residency. So just, yeah, if this is my recommendation, if you cannot go even for um, for the physical ones right now, just try to get yeah, the virtual yeah. one because those also they have the same, almost same effect. So mm -hmm. are useful somehow. Yeah. Yeah, with this in ruins art residency, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was some sort of a competition, which is very mm -hmm. common uh, mm -hmm. in residency. So you apply and you have to be, as yeah. I mentioned, chosen. Um, yes. So I was chosen with um, three other artists from mm -hmm. different countries. So we were from all right. over the place and mm -hmm. meeting together, you know, sharing experiences. It was it was uh, great, really. Yeah, that's very good. So. Um, Okay, so just a part of this uh, um, in memory of my feelings, I would like to ask you about, you know, just uh, your your art life, like, you know, just uh, how's your studio life or how's your, you know, just your artist life in general? Maybe then you can, you know, just uh, you share your presentation somehow or uh, just yeah, explain share, further. Yes, share. thank you. I will share the projects that were um, very important to me and changed okay. something in me, maybe the way of thinking or maybe uh, the way of working, like the residencies, but it's more a uh, personal, you know, so just, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I ended there with photography, so I'll start here with the photography too. Okay. Um, my first, um, I'll just share a selection, so it's not the mm -hmm. you know, whole project, just a selection yeah. of, of photos. Uh, first, um, my first photo book, um, I'm really interested in black and white photography and this is uh, what I love most uh, still and um, as you can see um, quite um, quiet silent mm -hmm. um, nostalgic um, images which I like a lot um, again fragments so dealing mm -hmm. with you know um, just part of something then you imagine what's there yeah. what was there the images come from Scotland and England um, mm -hmm. where I was living for a few years. Um, I also um, you 
use titles when I show um, the photographs together, like in you know in Paris in combination, mm -hmm. because I think that they they work well uh, yeah. as well together. Mm -hmm. Uh, often they were unexpected, so you can see on the left the shadow, for example. I didn't see that shadow when I was taking that photo, huh? you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I focused on the white yeah. bit of wall, yeah. and then you can see some connections like a horizontal, yeah. vertical, um, yeah, black, gray, white. Uh, still from uh, the, the photo book. Mm -hmm. um, Again, for example, the right side photo, um, I knew I had to take that photo because I saw the lady with the beautiful hands behind mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. On the left side, for example, it was accident. I mean, a surprise more because the lady there, she asked me to take photo of her with mm -hmm. her little phone in London. Oh. <laughs> and then I had this idea, I had this composition in my head that worked well and this is what I was interested in really so not always showing everything so you can't see her face for mm -hmm. example and then in combination with the other uh, photo uh, for example you have hands in the front the arms in the mm -hmm. front and here on the right side you have the back uh, some more here again dealing with um, horizontal vertical and looking for connections which is um, quite a big part of, of my practice. That I always look for connections that um, people don't see sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you have uh, here England and uh, London, England and Scotland. And one more uh, or two more maybe. Uh, here you have, for example, even something like black and white. So background is different. Mm -hmm. uh, you have one element inside. You have the symbol, so um, you have the little um, holes, like you no know, dots in the box mm -hmm. on the right, and the nails and the feet on the left side, and the, um, uh, you can see on the uh, cross. Mm -hmm. so these kind of connections. And playing with titles also. So very simple images that I just liked. I like the composition, mm -hmm. the idea, and I just called like a white house just like because I sometimes put some humor but sometimes maybe uh, not understood by others but it's just for me you know <laughs> um, yeah so um, another project um, very interesting also black and white photography uh, was A2 from B two person show uh, I wanted to share this because it's very interesting project I've done in 2015 actually 1415 it was mm -hmm. one year long project it was the longest project I've done with mm -hmm. someone in collaboration I was invited uh, straight after my uh, studies my degree show by mm -hmm. a Japanese curator working in Scotland um, to this project um, where I didn't know the other arts she invited two artists uh, mm -hmm. I was artist A and someone was artist B. I didn't know that person for a whole year. So no. the only, uh, the only um, connection we had were images we would post uh, online. So as a response to, to one another, you know, how we understood. And after yeah. one year, mm -hmm. yeah, after one year uh, we met uh, and I found out uh, uh, she's a Japanese artist, Tori Yamashita. Uh, living in the US at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it, was, it was just amazing, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to be straight um, after um, art school, after my studies, mm -hmm. jump into this world of exhibitions and um, two person show, which is it's different than, you know, group show because yeah. you have just you have to respect uh, this person. Uh, like mm -hmm. you work on a different level. And this, and this project was even more interesting because I didn't know that person. So you had mm -hmm. to kind of, every day you had in mind, there's this person somewhere yeah. in the world, you know, responding to my, uh, uh, my art. And then we'll meet finally. And yeah, that's very interesting. This. Yeah. Um, another, um, again, black and white photography. Um, this was solo show from Romania after my um, first residency in 2020. Uh, I mentioned that one um, before um, 
where I was invited to a National um, School of Arts Academy of Arts in Yash, mm -hmm. in Romania. Um, and again, it's part of, of my project here for the first time. I also uh, decided to use um, words because I often started working with um, writing, mm -hmm. either journal or in my sketchbooks, again, looking for connections. Mm -hmm. And this time I, I decided to create um, a piece, you know, to put on the wall actually in the gallery in mm -hmm. connection um, mm -hmm. to the imagery. And uh, you recognize, I guess, this project, uh, Kintsugi, a photo book, and also a show, which was last year online. Mm -hmm. um, again, black and white. Uh, but this time, this is important to me because it was the first um, personal, very personal project. Mm -hmm. I feel it's still unfinished, but um, um, main work was done. I think that means um, I took um, photos of myself self of my body as you can see uh, mm -hmm. parts of my body after my surgery so mm -hmm. being still in hospital um kintsugi um it's a japanese word and it means to join with gold mm -hmm. so for example broken uh, pottery ceramics instead mm -hmm. of buying a new one you like can demand you know mm -hmm. the existing one mm -hmm. so with this idea and also it's a concept it's a very popular concept now um everywhere i think um so enhancing the imperfections mm -hmm. so with this idea in mind i went through um this whole journey with uh, um showing kind of personal um intimate moments and again on the left side for example you have this board notice board which is i found it by accident but it's got you know the little cracks mm -hmm. so it just reminded me of, of the whole idea. And here's something uh, in contrast. I sometimes create, even though the project is, you know, about something fragile, subtle. Um, I, I put kind of uh, this heavy imagery here so to make a contrast, but still looking for connections. So, for example, um, it works great with the body where you mm -hmm. have fragile body, you know, as uh, we know, uh, in comparison to the stone, mm -hmm. like that can live forever, you know, it doesn't break. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more, again, um, kind of um, comparison, looking for um, um, differences and similarities. So. On the left side, there's a cave. So you have, again, you have stone wall. On the right side, you have a curtain, which was in my room after um, the surgery. And I would, you know, the wind um, would blow every day, moving the curtain. So it reminded me of, of breathing, of, you know, the skin, the body. <laughs> so again, lines, looking for lines, connections. Uh, that was the photography part. Mm -hmm. um, then painting. I put three categories to kind of uh, divide the works. Um, a painting, the main idea behind my painting, um, if someone. So um, again, if you look, if you don't look at the titles, you mm -hmm. can see different things. When you look at the titles, you can kind of see the head here, the person sleeping on the left, and you have paper and knife. Um, people were saying lots of things, like if they were seeing here um, parsnip, for example, you know, so whatever you want to see. Um, but with this idea, I worked. And these paintings are um, oil on wood. Mm -hmm. Because I started painting on, on wood um, quite early. Again, um, uh, here the uh, more figurative work. Again, um, oil and wood. Mm -hmm. Here, um, I was also inspired by old photography, like a very old, for example, postcards I found black and white, or images I found in books or films. Also, they were part of the same show. 
I will show you later the photo of how they all look together mm -hmm. and explicitly. And some more. Again, dealing with memories here. So what, how I remembered. Um, so I didn't have to, you know, have the picture in front of me and just copy it. It's just the, my memory of what I saw. And again, connections to lines and the fragments not showing everything. Uh, these are often my ideas when I paint. And one more. I here I found wood. So I didn't cut out that circle. It was just there. And then I created a painting in response mm -hmm. to it. So it's um, the idea that you just work with what you have. <laughs> That's it. Uh, here, I just wanted to show two images. Um, and I have a sketchbook here just to, to, to show you how big they are. Mm -hmm. And just, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. So, yeah. So I would make these little oil, um, oil sketches mm -hmm. uh, in my sketchbooks. And uh, that would be my kind of um, way of getting started mm -hmm. often. As research I would say for me that was it and coming back to A2 from B um, to person show in Scotland again very little uh, pictures um, you can see frame here times two and again similar thing you can see different things in the in the paintings uh, once you read the title, it starts looking for the actual thing that is there. And some more. Here you can see how the how I work with the paintbrush. Uh, so often I would uh, scrape, you know, I would uh, work quite long on, on one work. And this was a project I'm still working on, I'm still developing that. So um, the stone sculptures I've seen around um, in different gardens, you know, and my response to it. And uh, one more from the uh, solo show that was in Warsaw in 2018 called Return. Mm -hmm. uh, here, again, a similar thing uh, with between abstract figurative. So you're trying to understand what's there. Um, on the left side, you have earrings, and that was inspired by the earrings I actually bought, which were like big and in the shape of a fan, which I, I really like this shape and I use it quite <laughs> a lot. And uh, splits on the right side. Um, so I went into, again, painting the uh, human body, but as you, you don't have the, the whole uh, figure, so you can interpret it as, you know, um, I don't know, bridge or something. If you don't see that mm -hmm. it's a person, you know, mm -hmm. and you have blue. So um, um, it could be water, but body is not in water, water is behind. So this kind of things like it make you think. I wanted to also show, I have this painting here. So mm -hmm. um, you can see the, frame, the actual frame, the earrings. I don't know if you can see well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah. yeah. So I would build uh, these frames mm -hmm. myself. And uh, that was already, I felt like part of the painting, you know, you had mm -hmm. to have, it had to um, have this frame to mm -hmm. be uh, um, together as one piece. And uh, some uh, newer work. So paintings of women, I'm currently working on, um, again, the idea of um, between figurative and abstract. So um, I often don't paint the faces so you can imagine mm -hmm. whatever you want. It's not like this person, this is this person. Um, I prefer to, to imagine. And on the right side, painting from the, the solo show from my residency in Romania just to kind of uh, give you a picture of that. And uh, also paintings of women from the series. Uh, it's a bigger scale. So 
the last paintings, they were quite, um, quite small, 30, 40 centimeters. These are 90, 70. So I went back to, to big scale. And the last uh, collage, um, very important, especially in the beginning of uh, um, my work, my practice. Um, this series was created as response to a poem. Uh, the title is here as from Arkin, California by Walt Whitman, so American poet. Um, it was a long time ago, but it was one of the first projects that I realized where I when where I realized that um, collage is um, my thing, like mm -hmm. something I felt. And uh, although I spent a long time, really long time, creating these, um, but I noticed how um, different you can be as an artist. You know, in different areas, you can create this these sad photograph photographs. You know, as uh, in a photo book that you've seen. And also it's kind of um, funny collages. And some more from, again, uh, A2 from B um, show from UK. Here I combined um, a drawing, collage and painting. So main things and also photographs as you can see. I also, um, I have the sketchbook here, so it was actually um, shown there as a you know piece of um, piece of art there itself. <laughs> and some more. Um, I chose these. They are from different projects, uh, but as you can see, uh, all of them include uh, hands. So this just shows how one idea can go and live. And you, you know, for quite a long time, mm -hmm. and you can't get rid of this. Even if you really want, you can't because this is how you want the image to look like, you know. Um, so it's it's just a mix to to show you, um, uh, yeah, my way of thinking at the mm -hmm. time. And newer works um, from the Kintsugi again. Here I played with the titles because um, I found in these images um, kind of uh, once I created them, they are uh, with ink, they are found mm -hmm. or made or photographs um, uh, with ink. So I, I treated them as collage. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, they look like they have parts. So I put them here rather than in the photo series, the photo. Um, a unique part. Um, so again, uh, dealing with fragility um, and body, mm -hmm. so these kind of um, ideas. And for the end, uh, the images uh, from exhibitions I was talking about. So the photo book on the left, my first photo book I created. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually handmade, so I didn't print it. I, I made it. It was it was hard, but I managed. <laughs> and and you have the selection of uh, paintings, little paintings on wood. On the right, uh, here I wanted to show you two of my favorite images I have uh, from a Greek school of art where I studied. So on the left you have the shot of um, the the school uh, in summer which was the best time. So actually students, you know, work there or just chilled. Um, and on the right side, my studio, and it shows um, exactly the way I work and what's important to me. So you have um, the photography on the bottom. So I would develop photos every day in a dark room. I have books, um, so old masters that were great inspiration to me. And the wall, I don't know how to call inspiration of wall. <laughs> wall of inspiration. Yeah, That's a so good title. I found images um, for my sketches, but mostly found uh, that work together in a way. And I, by looking every day, I would get some ideas in my head, you know. Mm -hmm. And my little uh, sketchbook with little sketches. So um, small scale 
-hmm. but you know uh, lots lots of uh, work uh, and uh, the show in uh, Aberdeen, Scotland. So again, a little paintings, uh, the sketchbook I showed, and the photography together. There was also collage included. And um, this is the um, National University of Arts in Yash in Romania, where I started my journey with residencies. That was my first residency. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I wanted to mention here that um, even though you plan, to students especially, you plan a residency, sometimes it takes long time. So you have to you know, prepare and plan in advance because I got um, invitation, I was invited to this residency in 2019. Mm -hmm. And then it took one year you know, of waiting because there are other artists and uh, other things and only in 2020. I, I uh, went there to, to do my residency. So also, the, yeah, it's worth um, remembering, uh, having in mind that you have to plan in advance many things. Um, and on the right side is the solo show uh, with the, one of the paintings I, I showed before. Um, again, a mix of a painting, photography, and drawing, and um, work also so journal i think that's it thank you very much are you gonna have a look at my works and our contact um, here you have the address to my website so thank you very much martina for showing our your incredible artworks so i have a question for you here since you showed us you know just different types of artworks like different medium but um, uh, actually, I can say I have two questions. <laughs> First, I could see a lot of silence and body in your work. So just um, even though you are a vocalist, <laughs> somehow, you know, just you have to produce some, some sound. But, you know, I could see a lot of silence in your work. So this is something, uh, you know, just and also your, your, your choice of colors. They are not sharp or they are not really loud. So this is something, you know, just uh, we can say um, uh, it happens unconsciously or this is something, you know, just uh, you want to talk about or you want to, you know, just express uh, with your art. And I will ask the other question later. <laughs> uh, this is exactly it. So, uh, you know, you have no choice. You can just express yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is the person I am and that's why I create this kind of art because mm -hmm. if I went into uh, politics for example mm -hmm. you know um, I'm not interested in politics I, I I'm not able to create uh, this kind of work it's usually you know bigger louder mm -hmm. uh, sometimes often it screams because it's about something that yeah. like everyone uh, is interested in so um, yeah it's something that came um, from inside, you know, I can't really explain it because, uh, I, well, I explained it's me. So <laughs> this is the, the main thing. This is how I yeah. am. And uh, this is how I feel. This is how I see the world, how I observe um, mm -hmm. all things, everything around me. So this is the explanation. Um, I don't really like, um, I tried with some paintings, as you saw, um, the bold blue, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm not a fan of, of this kind of colors I prefer earthy um, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, quieter um, colors that they resonate with me um, with yeah, even though they are silence but they are loud <laughs> somehow I believe because you know they are just loudly speaking you know uh, about how the way you wanted to present those so I believe they are very successful but the other question I had is about um, like how since you showed us different medium. So just, I want to ask, how do you decide or how do you choose your medium? Uh, you know, just you have collages, photography, video, uh, paintings and all of this. So just, you know, just this is a question I'm asking because, you know, as I said, we have a lot of young artists here with us today. So just, I want you to explain a little bit about that. Uh, 
decision making with medium or how do you feel you know just this certain medium can represent or express your certain feelings mm -hmm. well you have to remember that sometimes as an artist you mm -hmm. don't even know that something can become art later on yeah so um with let's say with the photos uh i just wanted to have memories because mm -hmm. you know um i was living in in the uk for a few mm -hmm. years but i didn't know like how my future is going to look like uh, or where i'm going to be so i wanted to have some memories that was mm -hmm. the first idea and um with the photography um with the painting um well how would how i decide which um uh, which medium you said um mm -hmm. it really depends sometimes it's the project so I have the idea of the project and then I think which media is the best or how I feel now, what to make, you know, the question is often what to make and then how to make, how to make it. And because I'm a painter, like um, mostly I graduated with painting degree, that's why I say painter. Mm -hmm. um, I have the sentiment, you know, um, I know I will never stop painting. So always when I start projects, um, I think of painting. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I feel like, no, painting is not going to express what I want to say, you know, in this particular project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pointless to paint now, mm -hmm. uh, if I can also take photos. Um, I, I think um, everything is special to me. So painting and drawing and photography, Photography and collage, they have, you know, they um, they have something that um, something special that uh, I will, I know I will never, you know, stop creating. Like I will not resign, mm -hmm. even though I'll put something off for some time. So mm -hmm. I will focus on painting because, as I said, painting would express this idea the mm -hmm. best or photography. And I would come back because I would feel like, oh no, now I have to do something, you know in a photography because I haven't done in a long time or so with me that's how it works first I think about the project um what can represent what I want to say the best you know and with for the students for young artists I think um, it's important to remember that even though you are a painter because you are graduated to the doesn't mean that you have to now paint forever you know, um, because sometimes even when you do residency, something can change. You have um, other things to say there. You have other challenges. It's not always possible. For example, with the first residency, the, the one that um, uh, uh, we have the show mm -hmm. now on um, in ruins in Italy, um, I wanted to paint. So we mm -hmm. went to the, you know, the art shop because that was my initial idea to have the painting and then maybe uh, to combine it somehow with the sound, which would be mm -hmm. even more difficult. I think. But it was impossible because there was no time, um, no resources in the way, you know, not everything was there what I needed. Um, and the ideas, it didn't work. Painting and the ruins didn't work. You know, it was uh, about uh, medieval times um very early so paper was um uh, you know uh, more um worked was, better yeah. i felt <laughs> yeah. yeah worked uh, i felt it it would uh, resonate better than painting but mm -hmm. so depending on the place on the moment you know and sometimes even on the people around you because they can influence also you know that's true um, yeah. you know, and your ideas sometimes even you're, you have if you have mentors they can say maybe try this and then you discover so i think that was my way i just discovered uh step by step that i can do um different media i can work in different media not just painting yeah, that's very interesting to hear from you and uh, so just uh i have another question maybe you know just uh because we talk about all of this process and you know just your work mm -hmm. so just i want to know uh if there is any any boundaries you have 
in your uh, work production, like in your art production. So do you have any boundaries or, uh, you know, just you are, you know, <laughs> you don't, you don't, free. you don't call it boundaries. <laughs> so just you're just free. <laughs> So is there something you, you want to share with us? Mm -hmm. um, I think the boundaries are in my head mostly. Mm -hmm. So uh, of course, especially nowadays, um, you feel like you can do anything. Like we feel as artists, mm -hmm. we have more options, uh, more materials, um, everything is available. But um, it's in my head, for example, like I said, with politics, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, it's not even that I'm not, interested, I'm not interested in that, but I'm not interested in creating art about this. Mm -hmm. So automatically you create a kind of border boundary and you, and you put yourself, let's say, in this um, position um, that uh, I will be um, just creating art just about uh, existence or silence you know, because it's in me. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just, uh, it's, it's not in the mind and the <laughs> and thinking. So because if I change my thinking, okay, now I'm going to create something about the uh, war, which is also very a uh, popular uh, topic. Um, it will be possible because we don't have, like, we have materials we can create, you know, about anything, anything you want. It's just the question of like what you feel and if you limit yourself because in a way we limit ourselves without thinking. Yeah, that's true. So uh, this is my last question. <laughs> I don't want to keep you and everyone else here for too long. <laughs> so just uh, since this exhibition is virtual and you already um, uh, experienced with virtual residency and maybe uh, virtual uh, exhibition I don't know just if you had uh, ever uh, before uh, so just I want to to know your idea about you know just um, you know just about this uh, expanding of digital world or how do you feel uh, about yourself and your art you know fit in this world or you know just your idea in general mm -hmm. oh it's hard actually <laughs> because uh, uh, um, and on stage where I'm thinking whether it's a, it's um, good for me mm -hmm. or for artists in general, especially mm -hmm. um, um, artists who uh, don't deal with uh, digital um, or a lot. Um, I think there's potential definitely and um, I'm learning, I'm getting used to showing my works online because this is, especially after pandemic, and during pandemic also, mm -hmm. that was the only way to show. Uh, but I don't feel like um, this is uh, the right and the main way I should go, you know. Mm -hmm. um, with the sound, sound art, yes. Sound art video, um, I'm sure it's it's good. I'm sure it, it would work. Um, mm -hmm. With painting and uh, more traditional, you know, media, I still feel the actual real space is what we need, you know, yeah. um, to understand, not even to, to meet people. It's mm -hmm. just about seeing the art um, uh, with your eyes. Because uh, again, the example of the residency, mm -hmm. um, you feel totally different when you are in that castle in the ruins, seeing the works, you know, and in this, uh, in the white space, I'm not saying it's, you know, it's worse. It's, it's just totally different experience. But both are great. And it was amazing to see, you know, my work in this space, um, especially as, you know, it's a solo show. That so was, it was great. But it's just so different that um, uh, I think I have to get used to this and work again on, you know, on the boundaries and open myself to that. Um, I'm really a big fan of design too, so um, like graphic design and information design. Mm -hmm. I also create some myself, and I think that these kind of projects, um, mm -hmm. as an artist, I mean, not professional graphic mm -hmm. designer, but as an artist creating design, yes, that will work, that will work well. Uh, and with the painting and um, photography even, I think it's, it's uh, you 
have different feeling, different experience when you see it um, live in person. Thank you very much, Martina. And uh, I would like to ask our participants if they have any questions from you. Just uh, if you have questions from Martina, please you can uh, you can ask or you can even uh, type in the chat box. Let me check the chat box if you have something. Okay, someone asks, is this pic is like a photography? Yeah, they were photography. And uh, yeah, is there anything anyone wants to ask? I think, you know, just your talk was very advanced. So just you showed everything, you explained everything. I explained everything, okay. <laughs> well, anyways, if you have questions later, uh... They yeah, always can uh, can uh, can contact you. They they can yeah. contact you, and so if there is nothing here, then um, okay. I would like thank uh, to thank our wonderful team, uh, Chun Hui Shen, Ong Pei Yi, Alessandra Villa, Sohail Hosseini, and Emma Pornasiri for their great contribution and help for this exhibition. Uh, from this church. Uh, thanks again, Martina. Thank you very much <laughs> for showing you your work so with much. us and also sharing your experience today. And it was wonderful and Thanks. very helpful uh, for our young artists here. And uh, thank to all of you here. Uh, visit you. the exhibition at www.ierprojects.com. The exhibition will run until 6 March 2022. And have a lovely evening and hope to see you all very soon. Thank you very much. Okay, goodbye to Thank all you. of you. Goodbye. Thank you, Martina. Bye. Thank you again. Bye. Bye.